Hello everyone and welcome to another Genshin lore video. Today, I'll be going over the story of the Herblord and the area of Chenyu Vale. I'll be going over the lore presented in the Echoes of an Offering Artifact set, as well as the Primordial Jade Weapon series. Also, if you like the video, consider subscribing. It helps me out a lot and I'd really appreciate it. Anyways, let's move right on and get into the video. Located to the northwest of the currently available areas of Liyue, Chenyu Vale is a place famous for its tea trees and products. It is said to be filled with many mountains and streams, and is also home to a certain type of tea tree. This tea tree only grows lushly in Chenyu Vale, no matter the conditions of the water, soil, or sunlight. The tea is said to be of the highest quality, and is famous in the tea industry all around Tavat because of this. Additionally, Chenyu Vale is where the settlement of Chaoying Village resides. Of course, Chaoying Village is full of tea farmers, with tea trees planted all around the village. Chaoying Village also hosts an annual tea serving ceremony, in which they use the wilted petals of spirits and flowers to prepare floral tea. Chenyu Vale may also be where Yilong Port is located. So far, Yilong Port has only been mentioned in the lore for a symbol of felicitation, and as a result, not much is known about it. We do know that there are artisans in the port who make ornaments that resemble the symbol of felicitation, but beyond that, again, we don't know much. If you want to hear my speculative ideas about these areas, I recommend the video I made on them a few months ago. For now, I'd like to talk about the history of this area. Long ago, before humans lived in Chenyu Vale, there was a certain Adeptus who lived on a misty hillside next to a river. This Adeptus was known as the Herblord, and was the master of this mountain. There was also a second Adeptus, whose name is unknown, and the two of them were friends. One day, the friend planted a tea tree on the Herblord's mountain. After they planted it, they got excited, saying that once the tree gets larger and the leaves could be harvested, they should invite Cloud Retainer and Mountain Shaver to come over. Although the Herblord responded by complaining, she would still imagine the fragrance the tea leaves would have. Eventually, though, the Herblord and her friend left the mountain on a journey. They visited Liyue Harbor, where they would introduce the teapot and teacups to the people of the Harbor City. The Herblord had also wanted to introduce her friend to some other old friends, likely some of the other Adepti. However, she also thought to herself that the journey would be full of arguments, struggle, and many troubles. Besides the introduction of the teapot and teacups, it is unknown what really happened on that journey. We do know what happened after, though, as it is said that the Herblord returned to her mountain. At some point on her journey, though, something happened that would change her. It is unknown what this something was, but it may have had something to do with her friend, as she did not return. The Herblord had also lost a finger on her journey, now being unable to untie the jade leaf pendant that was tied around the tea tree. Later on, when mortals came to the area of Chenyu Vale, they would take branches from the tree and graft them across the river. This allowed the fragrance of the tea to travel from Chenyu Vale down to Liyue Harbor, and to all of Tevat as well. Now, I have a bit more to say about the Herblord. It was said that she possessed a slab of fine jade that could bring down sweet rains. However, Demons and monsters began to covet its power, so she broke it into pieces and hid them underwater, in the hills, and even offered some to shrines. These pieces are said to bear the blessing of a deity's pact, and it is also said that no one has found any. There was a priest who is said to have one, but it could have also been an ornament made by the artisans of Yilong Port. Anyways, 
These pieces are also said to emit the sound of flowing water. And like a star conch, if you put it up to your ear, you can hear the sounds. As for the Herb Lord, her fate is unknown, but it was said that her coming and going were quite sudden. As for the mortals of Chenyu Vale, they aren't actually native to this area. The new Jade Falls Splendor weapon tells us that the people of this area actually once resided in the chasm. It is said that their lives revolved around the mines, and that their settlements stretch from peak to peak. However, the people had no idea that an ancient sin lay buried far beneath their feet. When the Archon War began, catastrophe struck the chasm as well, forcing the people to leave the area and become wandering refugees. This may have been when the Spirit Stone, otherwise known as the Chasm's Divine Nail, fell down onto Tevat. Alternatively, it could have fallen before, and it was the Archon War itself that caused the people to leave. At this point, the answer is unclear, but it may be cleared up when we finally get to explore Chenyu Vale. Anyways, the people were also said to have brought a great jade altar with them on their journey. This may have been the same as the slab of fine jade that the Herb Lord possessed, and later broke into pieces to hide. The lore of Jade Falls Splendor does mention that the Bashui River possesses a luster of the sacred jade, and we know that the Herb Lord hid some pieces of the jade underwater, so it is possible. Now, I'd also like to mention the Primordial Jade Cutter. Its lore tells us that it was forged by Rex Lapis as a gift for a certain someone. I used to think this certain someone was Guizhong, and the mention of being consigned to dust in the lore of Jade Falls Splendor made me believe that more. However, after thinking about it for a little bit, I believe that the someone may have either been the Herb Lord, and that the Herb Lord was also a god, or that it could have been another god entirely. In the lore of Primordial Jade Cutter, we are given some words from a long-forgotten friend of Rex Lapis. Nephrite has the soul of the Bashui's gentle heart, and will in time cleanse itself of the remnant grudges within. But who will ease the agony that the jade itself feels for having become an instrument of slaughter? Now, the reason I brought this up is because Jade Falls Splendor tells us of a god that the ancestors of Chenyu Vale worshipped. It is said that they once believed in a now forgotten god, which may have been the same god as mentioned in the lore of the Primordial Jade Cutter. Perhaps that god was the reason why the Spirit Stone fell into the chasm, but that's a discussion for another time. Maybe I'll do a theory on it later, we'll have to see. Anyways, that's pretty much it for the story of Echoes of an Offering and what it tells us about Chenyu Vale. Personally, I can't wait to explore this area and uncover what lore and secrets it holds. It will likely be introduced to the game before Fontaine releases, as it is located between Liyue and Fontaine. Like I mentioned earlier, I did make a video on my thoughts and speculations on this area, and I recommend you check it out. If you want to know more about Liyue and the Chasm, you could also take a look at my Seven Wonders series, in the videos I made on both of those areas. I would love to hear what other topics you'd like me to cover in the comments below as well though. Anyways, that's it for this video, thank you so much for watching. Sources and further readings are also in the description if you want to check them out. I hope you all have an amazing day, and I'll see you all in the next video.